This is Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement or how to buy consulting services. You'll get tips on how to use consulting, buy consulting, and managing the consulting. And now your host, Ellen Lafitte. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Smart Consulting Sourcing, the podcast dedicated to consulting procurement. My name is Hélène and I am your host today. So now we're entering the final stage of our journey on how to buy consulting services like a pro. Today, we'll delve into managing project performance and daily operation. But first, let's recap what we discussed last week about the principles of good project management. Stakeholder management is vital in aligning and engaging key players right from the start by effectively communicating the project objectives and benefits, addressing their concerns and involving them in the process you can foster by in and support for your project. Project management involves developing a detailed work plan that breaks down the project into manageable tasks and milestones. And by monitoring progress and resource requirements, clarifying roles and responsibilities within the client and consulting teams, you can ensure smooth project execution. Also, governance is crucial for project success. Establishing governance bodies like the steering committee or project management committee provides direction, support, and decision-making power. It's important to strike the right balance, keeping the steering committee focused and involving relevant stakeholders without making it unwisely. Now, change management is often underestimated and plays a critical role, nonetheless. Anticipating and addressing resistance to change requires understanding stakeholders' concerns and anxieties. And by developing strategy to address these concerns, maintaining effective communication, celebrating early successes, collaborating closely with the consulting team, and planning for sustainability, you can ensure the success of your project. Well, now that we're all caught up, let's dive into managing project performance and daily operations. So this phase is where the real action happens, and it's crucial to stay on top of these things to achieve your desired goals. So buckle up and get ready for some valuable insights on how to drive performance and successfully manage the life of your project. Let me remind you that you can find the podcast on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and never miss an episode. And if you're looking for more in-depth content, head over to our website, consultingquest.com. In our thought leadership section, you'll find treasure trove of white papers, eBooks, and full transcript of our podcast. And of course, remember, sharing is caring. <laughs> And if you find value in this podcast, don't hesitate to share with your colleague, your peers, or anyone who might benefit from it. Leave a review and hit that like button to show your support. Let's continue building the community of consulting procurement enthusiasts together. So last week, we learned how to structure the project management of your project. And now let's tackle how it really works. You know, while having a solid structure is important, it's your day-to-day -day operation that makes the project really come to life. So let's roll up our sleeve and explore the practical aspect of project management, starting with driving the performance of your project. You know, the steering committee plays a crucial role in not only making decisions, but also ensuring that the project is on track in terms of timeliness and quality. Regular reporting from the consulting firms to the steering committee is essential to keep everyone updated on progress, challenges, and next steps. For shorter project, monitoring and reception often combine, you know. So following your project, regular meeting can be used to check the delivery and involve stakeholders in measuring performance. When it comes to low performance, there can be multiple factors at play, sometimes all at once, you know. One common reason for dissatisfaction with consultant is a mismatch between their expertise and the client expectations. You know, the clients may feel that consultants don't understand their business or haven't tailored the approach to feed the company's specific context. However, it's important to remember that the reasons for low performance are rarely one-sided. Subject context may have changed as it began, or unforeseen issues may have complicated the delivery. 
in such cases, it's advisable to have an open conversation with the consultants and discuss potential changes to the contract if necessary. Sometimes the project lies with the team itself. Consulting is all about people and finding the right fit. The consultants may have difficulty interacting with your teams, or you may find their approach too aggressive or wishy-washy. It's also possible that the consulting team is understaffed, which can pose challenges. Should you hesitate to discuss these issues with the consulting firm and consider their requesting a replacement, even for the partner if needed. Remember, the consulting firm has delivered two results, not just providing resources. That's why it's a good idea to include specific deliverable in the contract. Even if the pricing and proposal were based on a certain team composition, you could request changing if the delivery is significantly impacted in terms of time and quality. So as a general rule, unless the project's context or deliverable change, any movement in the consulting team should not impact the project price. Collaboration is a key success factor in consulting project, you know, both internally between different business lines and procurement when selecting a consulting firm, externally between your teams and the consulting team. So it's crucial to send a project team with the right talents, just as important as working with the right consultants. Your project sponsors need to support the project and get paying from other decision makers, while your project managers should have the energy and credibility to drive the project forward toward its goals. When you have the right mix, your team and the consulting firm will work together smoothly, resulting in high quality outcomes. So the time you allocate to your project is also critical. It should have been discussed during, during the proposal stage, considering what contribution the consultants expect from your teams. However, it's challenging to anticipate exactly how a project will unfold. So if your team is understaffed or unavailable for the consultants, it can quickly become a bottleneck. So be clear with the different business lines involved in the project about the priority you give it, right? If your project is highly strategic, consider reallocating some of the project manager's duty to someone else or reevaluating the project timeline if your teams have higher priorities. It's by being proactive in addressing performance issues, fostering collaboration, and managing resources effectively that you'll set your project up for success. Keep the lines of communication open, ensure the right feed between teams, and allocate resources wisely to achieve your desired outcome. It's not about managing the life of your project. Remember, project execution is not a straightforward process. Now, as you go along, changes will occur that you didn't anticipate in the beginning. So it's important to keep track of these changes and trace the most significant events. So what kind of changes can happen? Well, there are scope changes where new tasks may be added or some deliverables may need to be modified or dropped all together. Then there are staffing changes. You know, organizations are always evolving and both your team and the consultant's team may experience turnover requiring adjustments and or additional training. You know, time like changes also. It's common because let's face it, initial estimates are not always spot on. And finally, unforeseen events can pop up such as budget changes, project mergers, uh, freezes that can affect the project's execution. So make, to make sure these details don't derail your project, change management is crucial. When significant changes impact the scope and deliverables, it may be necessary to amend the contract. Other cases, the minutes of the steering committee where decisions were made should be sufficient. It's also important to document your interaction with the consultant, especially when their performance is not up to par. Keep data meeting minutes and share them with the consultants in a timely manner. Transparency is key to resolving any issues and keeping everyone on track. And for long projects lasting for more than three months, I recommend organizing a mid assignment review. You know, this is like a pit stop in the middle of the race where you and your consultants assess the project progress, review the scope and deliverables and ensure they're still aligned with the objective and the current business environment. And for the review, gather feedback from key stakeholders and prepare a summary to share with your consulting providers. 
this feedback should cover traditional project management aspects, such as um, completion and planning, as well as more qualitative aspects like behavioral dimensions, impact, and skills adequacy. While it's important to stay focused on the detail, don't get too caught up in minutiae that won't significantly impact the overall success of the project. The mid-assignment review allows you to address any potential tensions that could endanger the timeline and success of the larger project. When managing the relationship with a consulting firm, collaboration is key. It should be a mutually beneficial partnership where both parties work together for success. So avoid short-term attitudes that can damage the relationship. Treat the consulting firm as a partner, expecting them to deliver their work on time and quality. Provide feedback, whether it's positive or not. Be constructive, right? And maintain transparency when it comes to payments. Treat them fairly and with respect, and they are likely to do the same in return. Remember, the goal is to have a dynamic and flexible relationship throughout the project rather than treating it as a one-time transaction. It's by nurturing a strong relationship that you and your consultant will best benefit and improve your business practices. So keep an open eye on communication, expect quality work, and give feedback. You know, find the right balance between being thorough and micromanaging. Trust and collaboration are the foundation for successful consulting partnership. All right, let's take a little breather here, shall we? We've covered a lot of ground in the last two episodes, focusing on internal client and stakeholders and business lines. Now, you might be thinking, why should I care all about this? It's not my responsibility. Well, I'm sure that's a valid point, but let me rephrase the issue for you. Who do you think will be held accountable if the consulting firms fail to deliver? Yeah, you guessed it. Okay, man. So you'll be the ones catching the blame, whether it's because they, you didn't select the right consulting firm, you didn't negotiate the high price or failed to achieve the expected value. Is it fair? Well, not really. The truth is buying consulting firm so services is a team effort. Procurement should act as the facilitator, the gatekeeper, if you will. Your role is to ensure the right processes are in place, the right consultants are selected, and that value is maximized. However, it's not always an easy task to assert your views, especially when your stakeholders hold higher position within the company. There can be challenges in aligning everyone's expectations and navigating internal dynamics. So what can you do in that situation? Well, Remember what we discussed a few episodes back? Yeah, that's right. We talked about governance, milestones, and all the important aspects of the consulting agreement. You know, this is where you can take action and initiate the necessary steps. Sit down with your stakeholders and have an open discussion about how they envision managing the project. Listen to their perspectives and ideas, and then work together to articulate those expectations into the contract. This approach allows you to make things clear without imposing your views and fosters a collaborative environment. It's all about influence, which is a crucial skill for consulting procurement leaders. By effectively influencing the process, you can align everyone's interest and ensure a successful outcome of the project. So as we conclude today's episode, let's recap the key takeaways. Driving the performance of your project requires active monitoring and reporting to the steering committee. Keep stakeholders informed, address performance issues promptly, and use regular meetings to check delivery and involve stakeholders in measuring progress. Low performance can stem from a mismatch between consultants' expertise and client expectations. Have open conversation with consultants and consider contract changes if needed. Additionally, team dynamics and staffing adequacy can impact performance, so don't hesitate to discuss replacement if necessary. Also, collaboration is vital in consulting projects, so build a strong project team with the right talents, gain support from decision makers, and maintain clear communication. It's important to allocate sufficient time and resources for your project success. Managing the life of a project requires tracking and tracing changes and um, be prepared for 
scope changes, staff changes, anything. And change management can ensure project continuity and do communicating interaction and decision is essential for transparency. So you can conduct misassignment, reviews for long project, assess progress, review scope, and gather stakeholders' feedback to realign objective if necessary. You have to balance the attention to detail with you know, macro managing. Now, very important is to foster a collaborative relationship with the consulting firm. You have to treat them as partner, provide feedback, and maintain transparency. You know, collaboration, trust, and respect are the foundations for a successful consulting partnership. You know, consulting procurement is a team effort. And while it might not be your sole responsibility, taking the lead in facilitating the process and influencing key decisions can ensure project success and avoid blame failing solely on procurement. So align expectation, articulate them into a contract and foster collaboration. That's how you can drive project to run a specific and beneficial call, right? So in our next episode, we'll delve into a crucial topic of preparing the transition when the consultants depart. You know, while consulting bring valuable expertise and support to the project, they cannot stay forever, right? At some point, they have to leave. And as the project nears its conclusion, it's essential to plan for a smooth handover and ensure the sustainability of the project Outcomes. So we'll explore the role of procurement in this transition phase and discuss practical steps you can take to facilitate a seamless transfer of responsibilities. You know, from knowledge transfer to documenting, lesson learned, procurement can play a significant role in maximizing the project's long-term value. So till then, stay safe and keep up the smart consulting sourcing game. Remember, if you have any questions or need additional support with you consulting procurement endeavors, I'm always game for a chat. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or drop me an email at elen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. Au revoir for now and happy sourcing. You've been listening to Smart Consulting Sourcing, the only podcast about consulting procurement. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit the website at consultingquest.com. Find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. For questions and comments, send an email to ellen.lafitte at consultingquest.com. See you next time.